guys and welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make carrot cake. These are the ingredients, let me go over them. I have boiled and mashed carrots, eggs with my vanilla extract, sugar, walnuts and raisins, olive oil, and then in my sifter I have cinnamon, a little bit of salt, all-purpose flour and baking powder. That's it, that's all you're going to need. And of course a hand mixer. If you don't have a hand mixer, you can definitely mix this by hand with your own hand. Your own hand can be the mixer. <laughs> so I didn't become a comedian, now you know why. Okay, so there are just a few things that you need to know when you're, when you're baking. Basically keep your wet ingredients and your dry ingredients separate, um, except in the case of sugar, which gets beaten together with the whatever form of fat you're using. I'm using olive oil. This isn't the extra virgin cold press olive oil. This is the cheaper kind. This is like you can use pomace oil or a very, very light, light green olive oil that won't have um, that olive, olive flavor. Okay, so what I did was I just took a little bit of my olive oil and I just brushed my pan with it. Uh, if you have a nonstick cooking spray, you could definitely do that. And I'm going to begin I'm actually going to begin by sifting my dry ingredients. So sifting is really important. Uh, it gets rid, sometimes there are little hard bits in the flour and the powdered sugar, not the powdered sugar, the flour and the baking powder. And it also lightens up the flour mixture, which gives you for a nice light cake. So try not to skip this step, it's important. There are lots of these hard bits that you don't want in your cake and sifting, just make sure that those don't get in there. Uh, this is done. I also take a little bit of my flour mixture and I coat whatever I'm putting in. So if I'm making like a, if I'm adding chocolate chips or berries or dried fruit like this, uh, putting flour in it and mixing it together ensures that it stays suspended in the cake evenly rather than, you know, falling and uh, landing on the bottom of your cake. And this will be evenly distributed throughout the cake. So that's the reason we put some flour over it. This is definitely like one of those full, foolproof carrot cakes. It's one of the, the first things that I bake. This is my mom's recipe. And most carrot cake recipes use um, grated, shredded carrots that are not cooked. But this, just boiling them and mashing them, uh, really, really makes this cake very, very good. OK, so I'm going to add my sugar to my oil, and I'm going to turn my mixer on low so that way I don't end up wearing all of this. That's it. Once the sugar and the oil have been incorporated, I'm going to add my eggs and my vanilla extract and mix it until that's very well incorporated. Now I'm going to add my carrots that have cooled down. All I did all I really did was I put a pot of boiling water, a pot of water actually to boil. Once it boiled, I added my carrots, and I like to buy the baby carrots that already come, you know, peeled and everything ready to go in a bag. That just saves so much time. If not, go ahead and peel your own carrots. That would work too. I just like making life simple. Anyway, I boil them until they're really soft and tender. I strain the water out, and then I just mash them up with just like a potato masher or whatever kind of masher you have. So I'm going to add them to my wet ingredients, like that. Mix these up. OK, so my wet ingredients are all combined. I'll just add my flour and my dry ingredients a little bit at a time. Never overmix flour when you're making cake. That'll uh, create a tough cake that'll be like bread-like. So do add, do add your flour in two batches, that helps. Okay, and now the final step is adding my nuts and raisins. And I'm just going to fold these in using a spatula. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees. And I'm going to put all of my batter in here, spread it out evenly. Then I'm going to pop it in the oven and let it bake for 45 minutes to an hour. At 45 minutes, check it 
and see, um, you do the toothpick test, put a toothpick in the center, and when it comes out, it should have wet crumbs on it, not wet batter, okay? Okay, I'm putting this in my oiled baking dish. You could definitely use two eight inch round or whatever, you can bake this in loaf pans. Just make sure whatever you're using, it doesn't go higher than three quarters of the way up, whichever pans you're using. Distribute it equally, it freezes well. Just as, as long as you use the tip that this is gonna rise and it needs room to rise, so whatever dish you're baking it in or baking pan, make sure that it doesn't go higher than three quarters of the way up. Okay, I'm gonna put this in my preheated oven. It's preheated at 350 degrees. It's gonna bake for about 45 minutes to an hour and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, so my carrot cake baked for 45 to 50 minutes. It was closer to 50 minutes. I checked it and there was still some wet batter, so I just let it cook for another five minutes. Another good trick is when you see that the cake is starting to detach sort of from the side of your baking dish, that's another sign that the cake is ready. Now, technically, technically, you're supposed to let this cool for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, but who are we kidding here? It smells amazing. I wish you could smell it. It smells like cinnamon and it just smells like, a, it smells like the holidays actually and it's, what is it? It's June right now, right? So I'm gonna cut me a piece and since I'm gonna display it on a nice tray, I'm gonna give some out to the neighbors Nobody really has to know. I have my tea also because it is tea time, you know, around here. So let me pour my tea. Let it steep a bit. And I'll show you what the inside of this cake looks like. It's super, super flavorful. Really moist. Let's see if I can get this out. Look at that. Look at that. You can make this. You really can't make, you can't mess this recipe up. Most important thing is, few tips. Don't overbeat it, don't overbake it, and cook it in the right size pan. So just make sure whatever pans you're cooking it in, just fill them up, up maximum three quarters of the way up, 75%, so that way there's room for it to rise, and you are good to go. Can you see that? I'm going to make sure this is really good, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Get the recipe, www.demetrasdishes.com. I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. I'm going to burn my tongue. Mm.